Hi, I'm Naima. Welcome back to my channel. This video is about rest, something I'm not very good at. I recently had a severe relapse in my symptoms. This relapse was not caused by an increase in physical activity. It caught me completely by surprise. I predict that it was caused by increased cognitive activity. It made me realise that even though I've been living with long COVID for two years, I still have not learned how to properly rest. Deeply embedded in me is a feeling that is common among many of us of guilt when I'm resting even now. This niggling feeling that I should be more productive, I should be doing more or that I should earn my rest. This video is a deep dive into what it means to properly rest, to recover and why it's something that is so alien to so many of us. Before we get into it I have a really exciting announcement. We're going to have our first guest on this channel. I won't reveal who it is quite yet. They are a pacing expert. They've been coaching people with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia and long COVID and they have also made a full recovery from chronic fatigue many years ago now. Since then have dedicated their life to helping people learn to cope with life again. I'm really excited to have this guest on and it's going to be part of a new series where I'm going to be inviting experts to share their insights and tips for dealing with this condition. Please comment below. I want you to let me know if you have any questions around energy management, pacing and fatigue that you would like me to ask this expert. We will try to get around to as many as possible. Keep watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. with a metaphor for an expert in the field, Dr. Lapp. He talks about limits by saying that people with chronic conditions get a certain number of energy dollars that they get to spend every day on activities. If the average healthy person gets $100 a day, someone with a chronic condition might only get $25 per day. When a healthy person spends $30, they can pay it back that day. But Lapp contends that someone with chronic condition who spends $30, it puts them at minus $5. Not only that, but they also get a $30 PEM overdraft fee and they have to deposit $35 back into their energy account to get back to zero. I think this is a perfect illustration of what it's like to live with a chronic condition, what it feels like to have a crash, a setback, or even a relapse. It is your body telling you to stop and deposit X amount of energy dollars back into your your, your account, in this case, back into your, your body so you can reset and continue to live as you were. At that point, it's no longer a choice of whether to rest, but it's a requirement for your body to recharge. <laughs> of PEM comes in many forms. PEM can be pain, it can be fatigue, it can be brain fog, any increase in symptoms after overdoing it. And any of us with a chronic condition or long COVID know these feelings only too well. These symptoms have to be followed by a recuperative rest to try and get our bodies back from overdrawn to zero and beyond, back to our baseline of activity. But increasingly, I've been thinking, what if I didn't have to go through those severe setbacks anymore, where I'm forced to press pause on my life for an inordinate amount of time? What if I could re-engineer my life so that I didn't have to put everything on hold and get that recuperative rest? The key to avoiding those setbacks and not having to completely stop and press pause is to be getting preemptive rest. You can think of preemptive rest as a preventative measure for reducing symptoms, gaining stability and reducing total rest time. Preemptive rest or scheduled rest can bring immediate benefits to most people who use it. Greater stability, reduced symptoms and increased stamina. It's becoming increasingly clear to me that if I really want to make a full recovery, I need to not only rest when I'm completely wiped out, but throughout the course of every day before I'm wiped out. And there are three things that can really help someone to preemptively recharge. Sleeping, reducing stimuli and rest. There we go again, that, that fateful term. These three things tend to go hand in hand. It's taken me a really long time to work out that 
watching TV, reading or listening to podcasts are not resting. They require less energy than housework, than paid work, but they are still activities. The rest that I have not been getting during this time comes in the form of lying down with my eyes closed in a quiet place, listening to quiet music, using a meditation app. It involves taking a break from normal activity and creating a quiet place to recharge, no matter how good I'm feeling that day. But even that type of rest is not really giving us the entire picture. A leading physician and researcher Sandra Dal Dalton Smith points to seven different types of rest and how to achieve them. Number one is physical rest. This is the rest that we're most familiar with and this can be passive or it can be active. Passive physical rest includes sleeping, napping, whereas restorative active rest can be yoga, stretching, meditation or massage therapy for example anything that takes you out from your normal routine. Number two is mental rest, scheduling short breaks throughout your day. Mental rest could be having a two hour meeting at work or working, writing for a two hour block, then taking 15 minutes in a quiet room and closing your eyes, not looking at your phone, not listening to anything. Number three is sensory rest. So bright lights, computer screens, background noise and conversation, all of these contribute to us having sensory overload. So having these moments of intentional sensory deprivation can really help us to take the rest that we need and it can undo some of the damage that we have from living in such an overstimulating world. Creative rest, this is especially important for anyone who is brainstorming ideas, writing, painting, doing something creative. This could include sitting outside and appreciating nature, looking at art, appreciating art, looking at painting on your laptop, for example, anything that is enabling you to creatively appreciate something. It could be, could come in many different forms that spark creativity. Emotional rest, this is having the time and space to express your feelings, being truthful about your what you're feeling and not having to people please, for example. Social rest, this is where you find people who you can really gravitate towards and who are supportive and you can confide in. So I think that really taps into the, the previous point as well about emotional rest. Finally, spiritual rest is number seven and this is about being able to connect beyond the physical and mental and feeling a deep sense of belonging, love and acceptance and purpose and that can take many different forms depending on who you are. <laughs> Since my recent relapse and doing all of this research and really asking myself about whether I have made the changes I need to truly recuperate from this on a daily basis, I've concluded that I probably hadn't until now. I hadn't really taken into consideration the type of rest that I needed beyond sleeping, really. That was my definition of rest, sleeping and watching TV or reading. And now I'm realizing that I need to make some more drastic changes to get to the next level of recovery. My new approach is that no matter what I'm doing, every two to three hours, I will take 15 minutes to 30 minutes out of my day to sit in a quiet room, either to meditate, to close my eyes and remove stimuli, or to sleep as well if I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm also going to be identifying the different types of rest that I've been missing out on to try and recalibrate as best I can. I'd love to hear from some of you who in the busy world that we live in has found it as difficult as me to rest and to really recover fully and if anyone has some tips and tricks and things that have been working for them I'd really appreciate it. If you like this video there's another video on screen now all about pacing and my approach to that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much.